Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my Minecraft building tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to build this simple medieval house that's standing right behind me. You ready? Let's go. Before we get started on today's tutorial, let's take a look at the block choices and color palette we've got going. We're going to be using some spruce logs, dark oak planks, spruce planks, oak planks, diorite, stone brick, and then also dark oak doors, light gray stained glass panes, cobblestone walls, and spruce fences. Now if some of these textures look a little bit different to you, that's because I'm using the B00 texture pack for 1.9. And before we finish up today, we're going to take a look at this build in other texture packs, just so you can see what it looks like in vanilla. We're going to get things started with a 9 by 13 cobblestone foundation. We're going to come two blocks in from the front side and go out one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five, and extend that foundation for our patio right here, like so. Then we're going to grab our spruce logs, and on each corner, we're going to go up four blocks, like so, and even on the inside corners as well. So I'm going to do that, and then we'll get on to the next step. Now that we have our corner pillars in place, what we're going to do is put in the supports for our walls. And so on the nine long side, we're going to come right to the middle. You see we're skipping three on each side. And we're going to put up four logs like so to match the height of the standard columns. And then on the back, we're going to put in a little place for our back door. So we've got our, our back column, skip three, and then another column of logs like so. Now that all of the vertical columns are in place for the first floor, we're going to come in and connect each of them horizontally right here at the top with additional spruce logs. We're just going to follow that all the way around. With the structural supports in place, we're now going to come in with some of the wall material and we're going to be using dark oak planks for that. So we're going to go into that one from the edge of the foundation just to provide a little bit of depth on the overall design. You notice here we've got the inset. We're going to be skipping a spot right here. That's going to be for our window detail coming up in just a little bit. But around each of the upright columns, we'll go like so, skipping one in the middle. And I'm going to do this all the way around. Right now that we have our walls in place, what we're going to do is fill in where the doors are going to go. So one right here at the front, we're going to put it facing like so. And then we're going to come to the back corner here, put in the door like that. And then above each door, we're going to take some stairs and put them upside down above that. And we'll do the same for the front, like so. Now with the doors in place, every other blank spot that you see in between these dark oak planks, we're going to fill in with an upright stair and then an upside down stair. And then in the middle, a piece of stained glass pane. So I'm going to do that all the way around and then show you what we've got. And there we go. We've got our windows all in place. I'm just taking a spin about so you can see how that has all come together. We're almost done with the first floor. Let's finish up with a little bit of detail work here for the roof structure. So on each of the upright pillars, we're going to come out on each of the faces with a log just sticking out like so. Then on the face of each of these logs, we're going to put a wood button. And before we move on to the second floor, what we need to do is actually put in a floor. So we're going to be using some oak planks like so. But before I fill all of that in, let's take a look at our stairway to get between the first and second floor. So I'm just going to use some oak wood slabs. We're going to go across the back wall like so. It's a very shallow staircase and it shouldn't be a problem for pretty much anyone that is going to be using it. And so that's how we're going to get up to the second floor. What I'm going to do is fill in the rest of the floor and then we'll come back and take a look at finishing off our stairway structure. Now with the second floor flooring in, what we're going to do now is take some oak wood stairs, put them upside down right there, and then an oak slab like so. That gives just a little bit extra floor real estate up here and makes certain that we won't hit our heads when going down the stairs. And now we begin the walls for the second floor. And that's where these detail logs sticking out are going to help us a little bit. We're going to use those as our floor plan for the upright structure. So on each of those, we're going to go up four spruce logs like so. 
and we're going to do that all the way around the house. Now with the upright columns in place, what we're going to do is copy what we did on the first floor and just connect them horizontally like so. The only tricky part is going to be on this side. We're going to bring this one all the way in, and this one all the way in like so. And we're going to do that all the way around. Now it's time to turn our attention to the second floor walls and we're going to go inset once again like we did down below. We're going to be pulling out the diorite and we're just going to fill in like so, leaving a little bit of a spot for a window. This is a little bit simpler than the first floor because we don't have a steer variety for diorite, but here we go. We're going to copy this all the way around. We're going to leave a fairly large window back here for the second floor like so and you don't have to but it's really up to you i'm going to leave a large window there simply because i like the natural light coming in now the front two sections are a little bit trickier than before so what we're going to do is just come in like so we're going to leave a little bit of a window right here and we're going to imagine that there is a column right there we're just going to kind of ignore it so we cover over like so and we'll come in once again with a rather large-ish window there then around on the side, just diorite like that. No window on that side, but a window right here. And now that we've got all of the walls in place, we're going to go around with light gray stained glass panes as below and fill in the empty spots. And you can really see the structure starting to come together. We're going to come in and add a little bit of detail here. Let's get out the cobblestone wall. We're going to put that on each of these corners, one at the bottom, one at the top, and in the middle, spruce fences like so. And now that that's available on all the corners, I have forgotten an additional detail. We're going to come around under each of these little jut out points and put in some spruce fences like so. With the floors now done, we are going to turn our attention to the roof structure. And so what we're going to do is our upright sections. First, we're going to come in here on the front and go up with three logs and then one here on each of these sides. And then here in the middle, we're going to go up seven. So one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, and do the same thing over here. And then we're going to connect these two like so. And then we're going to bring this one back just a little bit. And that's going to provide our structure for the overall roofing material. For our roof, we're going to be mixing it up between stone bricks and spruce just to break up the textures a little bit. So first we're going to grab our stone brick slabs and just come around on the edge like so and go out one on the side of each of these right here. We're going to jut out over the edge of the house just a little bit and that's going to provide our, our eave. So let's do that all the way around and we'll come back for the rest of it in just a bit. Because we're going to have to merge two different roof lines for the front, we're actually going to turn our attention to the back because it's simpler, just so you can get an idea of the overall structure we're going with for our roof. So we're going to come in, go up one level, and we're going to go in with a slab like so. And then on the side, we'll come in with stone bricks. We'll just do one side here from now on like so. We'll come in with a spruce plank. And then here is a stone brick and then behind that upside down stone brick stair, right side up stone brick stair, upside down. We're going to go up one with a stone brick then upside or right side up stone brick stair, upside down stone brick stair. And we'll go up two and then a right side up stone brick stair like so. And we're going to carry that same profile all the way across with spruce in the middle and stone bricks on the edge. So I'm going to take care of that and I'll meet you back here. All right, notice the curvature of this roof. We're going with kind of shallow at the bottom and then tapering into rather steep at the top. Our front face right here is going to have slightly shallower pitch on the roof. So we're going to have to merge those two together. But before we do that, let's copy this structure of the roof to the front on both sides. And then that way we know kind of how we're mixing them together. All right, so we've got the template for the main roof kind of cut in. And so what we're going to do is turn our attention to this roof line right here. It's going to be a little bit shallower. We're just going to be using the stair variety here. So we're going to come in like so. 
and go alternating upside down stairs and right side up stairs till we get to the top like that. Do the same thing here. Just bring in a spruce stair so I can key off of that. And again, alternating right side up and upside down like so. And that is kind of the goal we're going for, the, the pitch of the roof we're going for. So it's a little bit shallower. So we're gonna fill this in all the way across until, I don't know, maybe right about there. All right, we've got the majority of this front roof kind of cut in. And what we're gonna do now is try to merge these two together. We're gonna start over on this side since it's a little bit shorter. And so you can see how that all is going to come together. So we're mixing this line. And you see right here, we come to kind of a conflict point. What we're gonna do is we're gonna knock this stair out because we don't want a hole from the roof into our house. That would be detrimental to the purpose of the roof. Then we'll come in here on this side where we've got the stair and we've got it connecting at a 90 degree angle. And then we'll come in like so on this angle, come in with our plank and we'll see what happens when we bring that together. Once again, if we were to do that, you see that hole right there that would develop? We don't want that. And if we were to do say something like this with our stair, we get this weird notch cutout thing. We don't want that. So in this case, the main roof line is going to override the lower roof line. We're gonna do the same thing essentially over here. Just bring this in right here, no conflict. Right here, when we bring this plank across, we got a conflict, we're gonna knock that out. We probably we don't need the rest of that right now. And we'll come across with our stairs just to show you once again how to bring these together. This is the most complex part of this build. It's overall rather simple. I hope you're finding the same thing if you do happen to be following along with me. But let's bring this spruce plank across and there we go. So we've got the front part of the roof merging in quite nicely with this main roof line here. I'm gonna finish out kind of like we did with the back. We're gonna finish up with just carrying this profile all the way across. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting much, much closer. You can see we still have a few details left, but you're seeing the overall structure really come together. So first things first, we're going to cap off the roof like so. We're just gonna put some stone brick slabs like that. And then on this top face, we're gonna put upside down stair and then right side up stair. And we'll do another upside down stair like that. Up here, kind of the same thing, upside down stair right side up. We'll take this one out a little bit further like that. And then stone brick slabs all the way across. This has an added benefit of removing additional spawns from this roof line. If you do build this in survival, it's something that I tend to keep in mind when I'm trying to build these things. And there we go. So we've got an additional little detail on the roof line. I think that adds a nice touch. We're not quite done. We've got this huge gaping hole in the gable side. And so what we're gonna do is fill that in. We're gonna come in just a little bit and take our spruce plank and fill in like this and not right there. And what that's gonna do is give us a little bit of a shadow and kind of break that up. We've got three different layers of, of depth here and that's really gonna help with just providing additional visual interest. That's the whole point here. With this, uh, with this design. It's a little bit more than just your standard oak wood box and cobblestone box. What we're gonna do now is carry this roof line, this upside down stairs in, but using the wood texture like this. And we'll soften this side up. And then take a step back. And if I can get there, okay. And you see how that has come together? I'm gonna copy that to the other side. And both of the gable ends are now done. We're gonna turn our attention to the front. This one's a little bit simpler. We're just gonna come in here like so, put in two spruce planks, just like that. Take that one out and then kind of sneak in, throw our spruce stair, and that is our roof done. Now with the overall structure complete, what we're gonna do is come around with some podzol and under most of these windows, not all of them, 
we're just going to put a little bit of a planter box like this. We'll do that right like so. We're, I'm going to leave off this one because the next detail is going to conflict a little bit over on this side. If we see right here, we'll take the wooden trap doors and put that around the pods all like so. If we were to attempt that right there, we can't put a wooden trap door on this face because this one is in the way. So we're not going to put a planting box right there. And in the interest of symmetry, we're not going to put one right there. So you've seen what I'm going to do with the wooden trap doors. Also on the bottom, I'm going to come along with iron trap doors like that. And then we'll come in with a mix of flowers of various kinds like this. These are my two favorite flowers in the game of Minecraft, but you can do that or you can use your own favorite flowers or even use grass or mycelium if you so desire. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the wooden trap doors all the way around and then we'll take a look at this build in other resource packs. And this is the completed flower arrangement within the B001.9 texture pack. Again, you can make that portion your own. What we're going to do now is take a look at the vanilla textures. All right, this is not too different from the B00 texture pack. All right, and here we go with the Faithful 32 texture pack. It's not very different from vanilla, just a little bit higher res. Gives a nice clean feel to it. All right, so I am currently using the CUDA Ultra shaders, and we've got the B00 texture pack on. This looks really good. And that is how to build this simple medieval house. If you've enjoyed, a like is always appreciated. If you've been inspired for your own builds, tweet me a screenshot at MC Soap the Great. I'd love to see them. And if you haven't done so already, think about subscribing so that you'll be among the first to know when I release tutorials like this in the future. If you've got an idea for a tutorial that you'd like to see me do, feel free to leave that in the comment section down below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.